Sup? What's up? This video is probably gonna come up after Fan Expo because I'm not gonna have enough time to edit it before Fan Expo. I decided like a week before Fan Expo, I was gonna upgrade my Biker Scout into something different. I'm going to make the infamous, the famous, the iconic, the notable Rick the Door Technician from Jedi Survivor. Wait, Fallen Order or Survivor? I think he's from Survivor. I think he's from Survivor. I haven't played either of them, so forgive me. So, the in the entire build of Rick, of how I'm going to transform my armor into Rick, is going to be a separate video. This is its video itself. It's how I'm making his staff. Since I'm broke, I have to rely... I can't buy the staff. Since my 3D printer is broken, I can't download files for the staff, so I have to improvise. And that's where good old-fashioned PVC pipe comes in handy. I hit up the local Home Depot, and I got a bunch of PVC pipe of a bunch of different sorts to see if I could build the staff within four days for Fan Expo. I went to Home Depot and I was in that section for probably 45 minutes, picking and choosing different pieces, building the staff there, seeing what would work before I was cutting it down. And the problem is that this staff that I chose, the actual width of the staff that everything's gonna attach onto, was like 10 feet long. So I was like, I was building things on top of a 10 foot long staff and just hoping I could get the measurements right. And I'm gonna have to cut it down. I'm gonna have to cut it down anyway, a little bit smaller than what I have now. But in terms of what I have now, I wanted to keep it pretty cheap. With the exception of this piece, this piece I'm probably gonna use for the power pack that goes in his back that connects to this rod. With the exception of this piece, I only spent around $20 on PVC pipe. All these little pieces, that includes everything. So I came home with, again, with the exception of this, which was $17 itself, because it's some plumbing thing with O-rings and stuff. I'm not using this for plumbing at all. I don't know how to plumb. With the exception of that pipe, everything was about $20. So this is going to be a $20 build on if I can make Rick's staff from Jedi Fallen Order or Jedi Survivor. I, I should really figure out which one it's from. All right, so when I was filming, my mic died. So you're going to get a voiceover on this one. So I apologize. The way I started this off was looking over the references that I had done at Home Depot. I was kind of comparing them to the staff, building them in that aisle, doing the best that I could to formulate the style of the staff I needed to. I was then taking those same pieces on my desk, following the pictures as you see that I took in Home Depot to get them to the way that I had them in the store. A lot of the pieces didn't fit in perfectly, which is where this step came in handy of applying some masking tape over the edges and then slamming it in place so that it had more of a snug fit. I didn't want to use any glue because I wanted things to be removable if I needed to adjust or change out some of the pieces. As you see, some of the pieces I got lucky and they screwed in, and I was able to use those thread designs later for paint jobs as well. I moved around to a lot of the different pieces using that same like snug paint tape method to really get them in place. I then went back to make sure that my actual staff piece connected in so that I had the full emitter done and then it could move on to the handle. Again, I went through the exact same method, going around with that tape method to really put them in place. I noticed here that there was a bit of an issue. One of the pieces didn't quite align the way I needed it to, and I needed to pull out the stone tip Dremel just to make sure that it would fit all the way in. So I had to do a process of carving out the inside while thinning out the outside and then slamming it in place. Then when it came to attaching the handle onto the actual piece, I had to measure it out and then use two pieces of that masking tape to measure out how much the pipe would snug inside so I wasn't cutting too much. You can always cut more, but you can't cut less. So I started off with a lot of generous room and then slowly trimmed down my way until the handle fit the way I wanted it to. Then just checking the handle to make sure it all fits and we have a pretty good size method. Then the next part was to move on to the base piece and the pommel grip. Again, it didn't fit perfectly so I had to go in with the Dremel to thin out those pieces to make sure it fit in and then combine it with the tape method to make sure everything fit in snug. Alright, so uh, I realized after the entire 30 minutes I just spent crafting this thing, my mic was not connected. Probably why the video you just saw had some shitty commentary over it, because that's what we had. Anyway, uh, this is why you're getting crappy audio now, because my mic is down. But I'll fix it in the next clip. This is where we're at right now. We have the basic emitter, middle piece, handle, mid piece, pommel, right? I do want to preface, this is not going to be screen accurate. I knew that from the start. This is simply a kit bash build of what I can build using only the supplies I could find at Home Depot. 
But yeah, I think it's more of a fun project to do it this way. So the next step would be to give it a quick sand, then a primer, then a paint, then I'll probably do the graphite powder method that I did with our Cassian Andor Blaster many, many months ago. And that will probably call it a day. This is just off of what we had from Home Depot for 20 bucks. So I'd say so far we're at a win. Aside from that 30 minute recording session without a mic, that sucks. But anyway, yeah, painting next. So first things first, I'm gonna hit it with Rust-Oleum 2X Flat Gray Primer. This is my primer of choice. Uh, you can use whatever primer you would like, whatever router can you like. Uh, this is the one I go with. I've used it all the time. Rust-Oleum 2X is very trustworthy. Never failed me before. Uh, I'm gonna use the 2X Flat Gray. And then after that's dry, I'm gonna follow it up with, that's another flat gray, follow it up with a flat black to give it a good matte finish over the whole thing. And then we'll bring it in, see how it looks. When it comes to painting a prop like this, you wanna make sure you're keeping your can about six inches to a foot away and do nice, even strokes. You don't wanna hold down the nozzle the entire time. You just wanna, I grabbed the one that didn't work. Hold up. Yeah, I got the right can. I had two cans next to each other. One of them was clogged and one wasn't. And of course, with my luck, I grabbed the wrong one. Anyway, what I was saying, when you're painting, you want to keep the can six inches to a foot away with nice, even spritzes. You don't want to hold the nozzle down. Just do nice like that. Make sure you're hitting all the sides evenly. Do light coats so you're not bubbling it up. And never be afraid to go in for another coat. Okay, well, I've made a crucial mistake in, I'm holding it now, and I ain't got nowhere to go. So I'm just gonna have to hold it till it's touch dry where I can set it down on something. Uh, that's a little embarrassing. Okay, so both coats have dried. The primer and the black paint have dried. I let them both cure overnight. Now, the next step I could do would be to take silver paint and do dry brushing over the high raised edges. And I'm probably going to do that. However, looking at the reference, this thing is made of some form of metal. I'm gonna go off of the assumption it's made of a similar metal as like Princess Leia's blaster or Han Solo's blaster in that same universe. So I'm going to apply a different method to make it look more metallic. I've done this method once before on a Colt 911 children's toy build for Halloween, where I took graphite powder and applied it over the entire thing, and then set it in. That's what I'm gonna do right now. If you're not familiar with this method, you take your prop that has already been primed and painted with your first base coat, and you're going to take graphite powder, just like this, and a very heavy brush, and apply it very generously to the entire prop. The process of this is obviously just dipping it in and then pat, 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 pat all the way through the entire prop. What this is gonna do is it's going to add on a metallic sheen of graphite so that when the light hits it, it looks more like metal and less like plastic. Then after that, we can go on top of it with the silver and dry brush on top. Now I am going to put a piece of cardboard down underneath because I know how difficult the cleanup process is with this graphite. And if I can keep it all contained onto one piece, of anything, I'm going to. So already I've just done this first section. You, you can see the very clear difference between that metallic sheen and pff, nice. The very clear difference between that nice metallic sheen and just this plain black. So I'm gonna keep applying it to the rest of it. If you are doing this graphite powder method, the next immediate step before you even touch the prop is to hit it with some matte clear. So I'm gonna go outside. I have a part of the prop that I haven't hit with the graphite powder yet. I'm gonna do that in another layer. I'm gonna hold that part while I take it outside, hit it with the matte clear and let it sit. The thing about this graphite powder is right now it's just sitting on top of the paint. And if I rub my finger across it, it'll come right off. Um, it gives it a nice shine, but that's because right now all it is doing is sitting on top of the paint. We need to set it into the prop. Now, if you're not doing the graphite powder step, it's completely okay. All, all you have to do is after you get your painted prop, you can take it in a dry brush. But if you are doing the graphite powder step, as soon as you're done and you're, you like how it looks and you've covered everything you want to cover, you got to hit it with some matte clear. 
You could use matte gloss if you really want the shine, but I'm going to dull it back just a touch so it doesn't take away from it. It's all about pushing it to gloss and then taking it back just a little bit in steps. Okay, so this is the prop after we hit it with the clear coat. As you can see, it dulled back that graphite powder just a touch, but that's exactly what we want. The purpose of that graphite powder is to make it look like gunmetal finish to add that extra bit of sheen over the flat black paint layer. It's just an additional step that's optional. You don't have to do it, but I always prefer to. I'm making a prop that I want to have some sort of a gunmetal or metal texture to it because it just gives it that nice extra bit of sheen. Next step we're gonna do is my favorite step of like all time. We're gonna do dry brushing. So if you did not do the gunmetal uh, graphite powder, you can pick up here and you can just dry brush over your painted prop. No worries. So if you're familiar with my page and some of the videos I did last year, you'll know what dry brushing is. If you're not, then I'll tell you. Dry brushing is a method in which you take essentially a dry brush and you paint over the highlights of whatever prop you're working on to make it look like exposed metal. Now, this is an older prop. It's not really my best work, but it gives you the idea of what dry brushing does. It takes a flat color and you add on a little bit of texture to make it look like worn metal. That's the method we're gonna be applying to Rick's staff. So, you can do it a number of different ways. Some people use rub and buff. They put a little rub and buff on their finger and they rub over the edges. My personal preference is to take silver enamel paint, which is a little thicker than acrylic, put it on a flat tip brush like this, dab away almost all of it, and then hit it with the high spots. I wanted to show you the difference. I dry brush, as you can see, that those top like three sections, and you can see how it brings up just that little touch of detail that gives you a little bit more dimension into what you're looking at. It makes that metal look we were going for look just a little bit more believable if it's worn and torn like that. So the dry brushing is done. Here's a quick look at the final prop before we take it off to Fan Expo. I didn't have a chance to do a showcase of this, but I'm gonna throw in some clips of me at the expo, and here we go, of me at the expo with the prop. I'm gonna have another video up of me showing how to make the rest of Rick, like the harness, the power pack, the coupler in the back, all of those other things, the gauntlet, everything like that. But this was specifically just for the staff and just to show how I made that. So definitely make sure to check out that other video whenever that goes up. Maybe it'll go up before this, maybe after this, I'm not sure the order. But make sure to check out the video of me making the rest of Rick. And of course, thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace and love. Do good things. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah,